from the law first, first mentioned, the word covenant was first used in Genesis chapter 16 and verse 18. And when a word is first used in scripture, they said from that word, every other time the word will be used, it will derive its meaning from that word. So the word covenant in the Oxford Dictionary, it means agreement. But in the, Os or in the Hebrew concordance, or what is called the strong, it means the word covenant is the word in the Hebrew that's called the earth or bereft. He say in the sense of cutting. Somebody shout cutting. That is why in most occultic group, until you are caught, you are not initiated. And most times when we are young and foolish, please don't be angry when you hear foolishness associated with the young. Because that's why the Bible said the rod drives away foolishness. So when you are young and you don't have a lot of sense, you can cut a covenant with somebody after a while, you are not ready to keep the tense of that covenant. With the aged is wisdom. So in the sense of cutting, number two, is also means a compact. Let me explain what this compact means. It means because made by passing between pieces of flesh. Like when God will ask Abraham to bring some certain kind of animal and divide them into two, and certain he insists, don't divide them, don't cut them into two. And he said to Abraham, walk through it. covenant so they are seeing covenant not just by cutting but you have to pass through it so that whatsoever that that tense of that covenant entails you are either a beneficiary of it or you receive the consequences of breaking it there are certain times when we are small when we are growing up you will put rope on the ground and they will say, oh boy, once you jump on, you have agreed with me. Covenant. Sometimes you make covenant, you put your hand, and the person put their hand, and you kiss your tongue. How I many of you know that one? And you think you are playing. And you say, I'm holy, I will marry you, I will marry you, not kiss your tongue. And both of you go, you did not marry. <laughs> Thank God for the blood. Somebody say, better covenant. Covenant is also a confederacy. When you come together, it's a league. When I discovered that covenant is an agreement, I was like, how many covenants have I broken? Oh, but I'm coming tomorrow. And both of you agreed. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. And you did not even remember. And when they call, you say, did you not say you come? Ah, I say, I forget. You forget a covenant. You forget a league, an agreement. Covenant is powerful. Nations, kingdoms, individual, they govern by covenants and agreements and leagues and confederacy. Certain persons who are in marriage, they are in, also in what is called the marriage covenant. That's why we say this covenant or this oath you are about to take, you are taking it in the presence of God and his congregation. That in better or worst, in health and in sickness, in, in plenty, 
an absence of money, when you start to get short or when you begin to increase height, I am with you. The debt do us part. And you say, you now, you may kiss the bride, you now kiss your destiny. And then you carry that lip and go and place it on another side cheek. You are breaking a covenant. That's why finances are leaving your hand. Ideas are leaving your mind. You used to be very creative. But since you break the tense of that spiritual covenant, one of the strongest covenants on earth, apart from the redemptive blood of Jesus Christ, is the covenant of marriage. That's why you see this thing you are about to enter, you must not undertake it lightly. You must have thought about it. You must have think about it. You must have done a lot of research and you don't say, I'm entering into this covenant. And then you now rectify it with what is called sexual intercourse. And that's finally seal the terms of that covenant. And most of the times when you are now walking out, people are now standing by this side. People are standing by this side and you walk out. Are you understanding? I'm explaining it to you. So when you explain it, you now, you now hug yourself and you now take picture. Rings are now given to bind you, to remind you that you are a carrier of a covenant that cannot be broken. And then you take the part of that person that is your better half and you give them a dirty slap. You are slapping your wife, but you are slapping your destiny because both of you are bounded in covenant. Is anybody getting blessed? Covenant is powerful. The reason why most Christians have not rise to the possibilities of their destiny is because they don't know the covenant they have with their heavenly father. They come to church. They sing the songs. They do everything, but they don't know that they are in covenant. God is so much in covenant with you that he said, your body is his temple. That is covenant. He said, what agreement has the temple of God with the temple of the devil? He said, when you take what belongs to me to worship the things that belong to the devil, you are breaking the terms of our agreement. Mind you, it was ratified with the blood of Jesus. I will get there. If you study Genesis chapter 9 from 9 to 17, you will see in that place, God was talking about covenant. I, I, I did not know that the word covenant was used 358 times in the Bible. So it's an important tall subject. 358 times the word covenant was used. And a lot of persons don't know the power of covenant. And mind you, it's not only men that are breaking the terms of the covenant of their marriage. Women are also breaking it. In short, if care is not taken, more women. But it's common with men. Men do, do it with pride and arrogance. Eh, it's my, am I not a man? No, there's not. You are not a man. If you are not ready to be married... Don't marry. Be like Apostle Paul. And when you decide not to marry, please come and tell us so that we can remove the thing that will make you to fall into sin. The Bible said there are three ways people can become Enoch. Jesus speaking. He said, one, they were born so. So they were born the things that make them follow 
run after women was removed by the grace of God from birth. Number two, they made them men carry them. Those times, those people who serve Esther's that, that, that lives in palace, people like Daniel, um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, as soon as they brought them, they removed They remove what we make in see a woman and now begin to they just help him. That's why you see Daniel was full of revelation. He was seen inside because he was not distracted. And they say number three, they made themselves eunuchs for the cause of the gospel. So Oboroima, if a chineke burugi, iwerike control ya. The Bible says it's better that part of your body is removed than all your body goes to hell. Biakai. Kanye Giaka. Somebody shout covenant. I met a young boy. He said, God, if nobody this the way you give me up for the serve you well. He said, This is the problem to me. And you could see the the, the, the the cry of his heart and the, also the willingness to use it. You are not really tempted until what you are tempting, you, what, what is tempting you and the other opposite side of what is dragging you to, from the temptation, they are equal and opposite strengths. That means you love God very well. But the thing that is tempting you, you also love it very well. That is true temptation. Father, I love you. But this girl, I love her too. So if you love her, go and marry her. Quick, quick, quick. Don't even come with wedding clothes. Show up in my office. I'm telling you, God has given me the authority. I can declare you husband and wife, even on the phone. I'm telling you, it can. You don't understand the power we have. I say I can declare you husband and wife. Come back and collect the certificate anytime you are ready. I don't know what you you don't understand. You just it's the, this place there is power. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We, God has given us authority to be able to say, "You go, your sins are forgiven. Yes, go, you are married. <laughs> Continue that ministry you have started. Continue on it. Do you know how many persons by sex?" You are in covenant with. That's why he jail to or doggy. He jail to or doggy. Anytime you want to serve God, it's as if everything is fighting you. Because the devil knows the day you make up your mind with God, you will go far. So, but what you have tied yourself with. They become a bondage, a limitation. And they are holding you. And because you do not know that they are covenant, you have not taken time to break them. You can read the seven laws of Moses, that book, and you are in covenant. Before you finish the book, in your heart, you have signed something you did not prepare for. So anytime you come to church, as the word of God is coming from this side, what you have eaten and you have swallowed is now resisting it. So you cannot attain to glory. Because he will not send his idea. He sends his word. And the way you receive the word, that will guarantee healing and deliverance. So that you are fed with something that is anti the word. So once it comes, he hits back hard place and comes. So even though when help shows, you cannot be help. Is anybody getting blessed? 
Genesis chapter 17. I want to show you something. Genesis 17 from verse 1. And when Abraham was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared unto Abraham, Abraham, I mean, and said unto him, I am the almighty God, walk before me and be thou what? Perfect. If you understand the backdrop of this scripture, is that for about 14 years, God has stopped talking with Abraham. Because 14 years ago, an idea was sold to Abraham and Abraham received the idea. What was the idea? Sarah came and said, take my handmail, Hagar, and produce a son for me. So that whatsoever that is happening, this, this embarrassment of barrenness can be removed from our home. Abraham, oh. Abraham did not speak in tongue. He did not resist. He just say, where is she? That is why every man who has the capacity to control three appetites will always rise to their destiny. Number one, the appetite for sex, the appetite for drinking, and the appetite for food. This is a challenge to men. A man does not have period. He's ready at all times. So if he can control his sexual urge, God can use him. If he has control of how he uses himself to navigate, because every kind of person will come to you. The weak, the strong, the used, the abused, the they will come, but you have to stand. Abraham, quickly, pam. The, it was, you would know that Abraham was fetter, that the problem was Sarah. Or to the girl, me quickly. For 14 years, there was no communication with God and Abraham because Abraham have decided to use help myself syndrome. God have waited. I'm finding a husband. I'm going to look for a husband myself. I know where to get them. Now you have gotten it. Now you are saying, God, how did I enter it? God, forget it. If you don't want to bless me, you can keep the blessing. I know how to find it. I will backslide. And heaven say, ah, you are not the first. You are not the last. The one guy called, is it Demas the coppersmith or what is his name? Huh? Yes, the man has forsaken me. So you are not the first. Even in Bible, they capture men who left the truth. So Abraham, then God, 14 years, God was not coming to Abraham. Abraham, walk before me. It's not about the blessing. It's about the relationship. It's about the covenant that I have with you. You think that you will be in covenant with God and God will not bless you with things money can buy and things money cannot buy. Who has deceived us to think that God is slow? Who has deceived us to think that God's time is not the best? Who has made you think that if this life is leaving me, when will I change my level? No, changing of level is not in your hand because there is what is called premature Exposure, it leads to blurness. There will not be clarity and sharpness. And in verse 2 of that test, verse 2, and I will make my covenant between me and you. I will make my covenant between me and thee, and I will multiply thee. It is covenant that guarantees multiplication. It is covenant that guarantees increase. It is covenant that makes you visible to the entire generation of the world. That any nation and kingdom that refuse to serve the greatness of God upon your life, God will utterly destroy them. 
if you are in covenant with God, everybody can fall. You will be rising. And if you are falling, check where God is digging you into a well so that you can mine oil. Covenant is powerful. That is why the devil always wants you to cut covenant with him before you meet God. Verse 3, read with a loud voice. Verse 3. And Abraham, Abraham fell on his face and God talked with him. Saying, verse 4, as for me, behold, my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be a father of many nations. My covenant is with thee. My covenant, you are a carrier of my covenant. Are we not Abraham's children? If our father carry covenant, we are also a carrier of the same covenant. In short, there is a better covenant. We operate a better covenant. If we are failing, it's because we don't understand the terms and the agreement of our covenant. The reason why a lot of people are not serious with God is because somewhere in their mind, they don't believe God. They believe their paycheck that every month it will show. They believe their husband. They believe their children. They believe their father. But they don't believe God. He said, Abraham, you, you are a carrier of my covenant. You'll be a father of many nations. Imagine God is telling a man, you'll be a father of many nations. And Abraham have nothing to show for it. Except the one that God is not happy with. The illegal child. Verse 5, read with a loud voice quickly. And what? Neither shall thy name any more be called Abraham, but thy name shall be called what? Abraham. How many of you know that since the day you start serving God, God gave you a new name? You have a new name, except you are ignorant of it. He said he has given us a name that is above what? Every other name. That the name of what? Jesus. My real name ought to be Bright or Medomero Edada Jesus because that is the family I subscribe to. Yeah. 